Hey guys, good morning. I'm uh, here to make a Greek watermelon salad. Usually you get to see this in class with me in front of you and you get to smell it and taste it. So that's a bummer that we don't get to do that, but um, I'm able to go over at least a few things that I know in the kitchen right off the bat and a few safety and sanitation things. Okay, so with that, um, we're gonna get right into it. This is my cameraman, Parker, so thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, so the, normally the recipe would be right in front of you on a piece of paper. Um, I have mine on my phone and so I'll kind of go over the ingredients. But obviously the first things first, you guys, is keeping some keeping your area clean. Um, if you look a little bit behind me, this didn't just happen real quick. We took 15, 20 minutes to at least clean up what you see. And uh, even then, I'm sure if I looked, looked over it, I'd need to clean up a little bit more. Um, but let me go ahead and point you down here to what I got going on, okay? Just notice this is my area and I'm trying to kind of keep it clean. And I'll talk a little bit about just some general things that I think you should know, okay? Real quick, this, these are some things that, you know, students have trouble with in, in the first place. Um, you know, teaspoon versus tablespoon, you know, it's easy to forget and mix those up, but obviously a teaspoon is smaller. A teaspoon is about three and a half, uh, a tablespoon, excuse me, is about three and a half teaspoons. So just remember that tablespoon is a larger amount. Like if you put this in your cookies and it's salt instead of this, you're going to have a bad time. Okay. Also for measuring you guys, this would be a liquid measuring cup. For today, I'm gonna to measure a few liquids, and these are gonna be dry measuring cups. Okay, I have some fun ones that collapse. Um, for something like a watermelon salad, you guys, it really doesn't matter if you're super accurate. Obviously, you want to have a well balance uh, of flavors, and, but you need to definitely make sure that you're kind of sticking to the measurements the first time you ever make something, and then you can adjust. All right. So, um, you know, obviously having the right tools for the job is super important. So um, if you are in the middle of making something, you know, especially think of a cake or something and you don't have the right tool and you have to put something in the oven, you're going to have all this anxiety in the kitchen. And obviously that's not, not fun. Um, if you can kind of think it step by step and, you know, obviously take it slow. Some of you guys are really experienced in the kitchens and some of you are not, then you're going to have uh, a good time. So, you know, try new things. You learn what you like and what you don't like, and that's uh, totally acceptable. Okay, um, let's go ahead and take a look here, and I'm gonna show you kind of what I have. So first thing is having a lot of extra bowls, you guys. That is super important. In a salad like this that I'm gonna end up kind of tossing around, you know, I see people serve themselves a salad in here, and it's the lettuce is all up here. You can't stir it around. It's not gonna make sense. So you need to have a big bowl. You need to have all your ingredients around, kind of a clean surface. And with that being said, I'm gonna just go ahead and start chopping stuff up and uh, kind of talk while I do that. So something like uh, what you just saw my son zoom out of is, you know, kind of nice. I have my iPad set up, so I really don't have to touch my phone or touch my device while I'm cooking. Um, and it's just kind of a reminder of me of what exactly I need to chop. So the first thing on the ingredients list is four cups of chopped watermelon. Um, I'm gonna keep mine in the fridge and do that as the very last thing, right? I don't wanna keep it out. It's obviously pretty hot out today, so we'll keep that nice and cold. Um, I'm gonna need to do one and a half cups, or I'm sorry, a half a cup of chopped olives you know, in any of these things, some of you might be like, yes, olives. Some of you might be like, oh, I'm never gonna have that salad. You can take things out, you can adjust it, right? Like the recipe here actually um, asks for a red onion um, and my wife and kids don't usually like onions, so I'll probably leave that out, okay? Okay, so one of the first ingredients is some olives. These are Kalamata olives, which are really nice and um, salty. Um, if you don't love them, you don't have to eat them. Notice how I'm handling this knife. That's really an important thing to start with. I have this as one of my favorite chef's knives. You can tell I, I have this in my hand. It's a part of my arm and hand. It's not gonna slip out, okay? And I'm using this other hand completely on top of it and just moving this knife around. And that's really just protecting my hand. So um, I wanna do kind of a finer chop. It's really up to you. If you like big chunks of olives, you can totally do that. I'm gonna, again, just make them sort of chopped up, have some bigger chunks, have some smaller chunks. And notice that's a rough chop, okay? I'm gonna chop some of the vegetables. You know, this really doesn't take a lot of work. The nice thing is this salad is cold, so um, you uh, don't have to heat up anything in your house. Got some nice cucumbers out of my garden. Um, cut off the ends like that. Notice what I'm gonna try to do first is cut nice and flat, because you know, when cucumbers roll around, that's when your knife can slip, and that would obviously be bad, okay? Um, I'm gonna kind of chop these a little smaller than the chunks of watermelon, okay? Um, really, again, totally up to you on how you do this, but I'm gonna keep them sort of even so that when you get a bite, it's just kind of consistent. Notice I'm keeping my fingers in a claw position. They're never gonna get out and get chopped. And when I get to the very end, I'm gonna take my hand completely away so that I'm not worried about it. This um, recipe asks for really the only herbs in it is basically parsley sprigs, but I think that mint goes really well with Greek flavors. You know, oregano is what it goes really well. I have a bunch of basil growing, so I'm gonna probably throw some of that in. But you know, again, definitely you can mess around. I'm really just making sure I have a good balance of salty, sour, sweet, 
Um, you know, all these different things kind of working together, okay? Um, one thing you definitely should be doing, if your recipe asks for some citrus, which this is gonna ask for the juice of one of these lemons, is I'm actually gonna zest it, okay? Or you can use what's called a microplane. I'm just gonna zest it directly over my bowl that I'm gonna end up tossing in anyway. You guys see all that zest right there? Um, that is, that's where all the essential oils are. I'm just doing really on the edge, so I'm trying not to get any of that white. So it takes a little practice, and you all try not to shave your your thumb or your hand or anything, but you can do the half of a lemon. If you like a little bit more like I like, you can do the whole thing. Fun fact, do that before you cut your lemon and, and squeeze it, right? It's gonna be a lot easier. So then I'll be able to cut this. I like to go on a nice diagonal. I'm gonna even squeeze the lemon directly in here so I don't have to worry about it too much later. Okay. If you get any seeds, you can kind of fish those out. This asks for about four cups of a, of a watermelon. This is probably a little more than that. Um, but I had this in the fridge. You know, you want your watermelon nice and cold. I also had the feta cheese that I kept in the fridge, you know, till the last minute. Try to keep those things in the fridge until you're ready to use them, okay? So let me show you a cool way to cut a watermelon. There's obviously a million ways to do it. I could flip this over, which is obviously the safe way to do it because um, you have a flat surface. Um, you can also shave kind of the edges, um, but there's a couple different ways. So take a look here. I learned this a long time ago and it seems to work pretty well. And kind of help me make sure I keep the right sizes, right? Like we talked about, the cucumbers were a little smaller than this. So I'll keep the watermelon just a little bit bigger. But what I'm doing with this really good knife that I'm very comfortable with is running all along the edge of that. Okay, now I'm going to turn it. Go again, go again. It's a fun little trick. And you can definitely do it many other ways. Okay, then I kind of turn it this way. You got to be real careful. Kind of turn the knife. Turn the watermelon, turn the knife, turn that watermelon. <laughs> okay, we're looking good there. And then here's the other trick is to cut in on the side and just swipe my knife. Okay, and I'm not gonna make a huge cut all the way through, but hopefully some of you guys are maybe gonna see what happens here in a second. Usually the first couple layers come out pretty well. So it looks like nothing happened there. Let's go ahead and see what happens when I pop this in here. So quite a bit of watermelon already came out. Kind of fun, right? It's another way to do it. I'm sure there's a million ways to do it. But hey, when you have fun knife skills or you like playing with that, then you can. You get some big pieces and small pieces in there. It's not a problem. You can always nibble on those. You got to check it and see if the watermelon's good. All right, so uh, again, it took me a couple minutes just to kind of clean up. Obviously, that watermelon gets a little wet over here, but what I'm doing now is I'm gonna chop up this feta cheese. Um, if you get a block of it, that's good because you know, you're know you looking for them to kind of maybe be squares similar to your other items in the salad. I'm gonna use like two thirds of this. It's pretty um, strong flavor. So when you work with it, just you know, know that. You can always add more too. Like I tell students, you can always add more. It's kind of hard to take things away like salt. Um, so I'm gonna start with this and these are looking nice. Okay, let me toss that in there. Okay, we're getting ready. It's basically everything's gonna go in the pool. Everything's gonna go to the party, okay? Um, and then we'll toss the herbs in as one of the last things, okay? Um, let me just double check my list, right? That's what I always wanna do, make sure I have everything. It asks for about a teaspoon of olive oil. I mean, I'll put a little bit on there. It seems kind of weird maybe to put olive oil with fruit, but it does taste good and coats everything. And the other thing that this asks for you guys is this chili lime seasoning, which I've made my own before. This is, I have this in my cabinet, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. Um, and you know, again, you can always add more. So I'm gonna add what looks to be about a teaspoon worth, right? I can just kind of sprinkle a bunch over it and kind of, Again, get to the point where I can add some more if I need to. All right. Just kind of really tossing it together. I'm trying not to make sure that I break up those pieces of watermelon. You know, if I get in there and get too aggressive with it, they're going to turn to mush. This is also a salad you would make, um, you know, an hour or two before a party. Not much more than that because it can kind of turn to mush. So now's a really good time that you do want to taste your food, right? If you don't, if it doesn't taste good. That's your fault, not mine. That's what I always tell my students, right? Parker, you want a bite? No. All right, kind of figure you might say that. Let me get a little cucumber in here and try it as well. And I'll tell you guys what it needs. <laughs> All right, that was like my happy dance. That was, that was really good. Um, probably I'll go back and add a little bit more of the tahine, which is basically a chili lime seasoning. 
um, because I like that punch of flavor, but it's really still sweet, even though you think that lemon juice um, and those olives might make it really um, acidic. It's really not, it's really good. Um, yeah, you can always adjust it. I made an Asian watermelon salad uh, kind of similar to this before that has a lot of chili peppers in it. So um, feel free to adjust it. And this was just a quick kind of uh, introduction on showing you guys a little bit about chopping, a little bit about safety and sanitation. So uh, hopefully you guys will get in the kitchen this weekend and play around.